So if you want new money, you have to obtain new habits. So in this episode, I'm gonna be talking about the seven habits of highly successful faith-made millionaires, starting in three, two, one, let's go. Let's get this money. What's cracking, everybody? Money smart guy, Matt Zapala here, healing to you from Dallas, Texas, and another episode here I'm fired up about. Uh, it's new work. Maybe uh, you guys want a copy of this. Maybe I'll give you an opportunity for a link to get this PDF for free on the seven habits of highly successful faith-made millionaires. It's my little spin on it on the book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And I just had a faith-inspired move to regurgitate this from a biblical faith-based perspective. All right, let's get into it. So if you want... New money, got to have new habits. Number one, anticipation for generations. You see, faith made millionaires don't think just about this generation. They think about generational wealth down the road. And by the way, generational wealth is more than just money. In my opinion, it's wisdom, it's ambition, it's values, it's principles, things that are passed on from generation to generation. Money makes it sweeter because they can actually put money towards those dreams, goals, ambitions that in your current generation, you may not have been able to obtain. But a few generations, because you're investing for the future, that's what faith-made millionaires are all about. It's one thing to take care of themselves for this generation, but it's taking care of making sure that generations down the road get to fulfill the big vision of what God has inspired to you, to you, and through you into the next succeeding generations. Scripture says this, Proverbs 13, verses 22. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. Think about it. The whole gospel the Bible talks about what we need to do today to live a godly life. So therefore, down the road, we have eternal life with our Father in heaven. But what we do need to do today? We accept Christ. We enter the, the heavenly realms because we accept Christ on earth today. So therefore, down the road, we anticipate that we are entering heaven to be with our Father in heaven, to reunite with relatives, to reunite with people that we loved and cared about uh, growing up, that they're waiting for us in heaven. But we anticipate that happening by what we do on earth today. Listen, I've been in a life insurance business and we talk about anticipation of dangers and risk that may happen down the road. So faith made millionaires anticipate chaos. They anticipate the hard times. They anticipate recession. They anticipate a downturn. They anticipate enemies and downfalls and pitfalls. So faith made millionaires look not only to what they're currently doing today, not getting excited about what their current financial situation is right now, but they also anticipate what happens if certain market changes happen? What happens if certain vendors or opportunities or shifts in a market happen that affects my business ultimately? See, faith men millionaires just don't think about right now. They're always constantly evaluating what is lurking around the corner. We already know that dangers and enemies are lurking right around the corners. So we have to take our time, our talent, our resource, our relationships to make sure we plan for, for the what if type of scenarios. Because when that what if scenario happens, and it will, you go through that chaos with confidence, clarity, and you march forward and take advantage of other opportunities that might be laying along down the road. And we already know that down the road does not equal smooth sailing. If it's smooth sailing right now, it's definitely going to be rough sailing down the road. So anticipation is actually an expression of faith. Let's read what scripture says here in Matthew 6, 26. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. And yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not more value than they? More so, faith-made millionaires and faith-based entrepreneurs are constantly investing their time, their talents, the resources by expressing servant leadership. They put their money where their mouth is because they know these are resources that's not theirs. They're just a steward of the resources. They're a steward of these finances, they're a steward of their business, their career. And so they put their tithes, they put their offerings, they put their money in investing in other people, also in investing back into their own machine that the God has given them, their business, their career, so they can take care of themselves and they take care of other people. And that's how you anticipate for greatness by making sure that the resources that have been given you are constantly working for you, with you, and through you. Number two, starting with purpose, then discovering how. Jeremiah 29, 11 says this, God has plans to prosper us and give us hope in a good future. Most people start the business in these four phases. First phase, they survive. Second phase, they have some status. Third phase, they have some freedom. Fourth phase, boom, now they're operating and working on purpose. But faith made millionaires start off the opposite way. 
they actually start off with purpose. See, the last thing I would think about was me entering the financial services industry back when I was leaving the United States Marine Corps. The last thing I'd ever think about was being an entrepreneur and being in business for myself. Matter of fact, I didn't even know how to spell entrepreneur until about eight years ago. The last thing I think about was entering the insurance industry. So how did I figure this stuff out? It's completely by accident. My purpose was making sure I left the Marine Corps to serve my number one purpose, which is being a father and being there for my children. Sure, I had to survive. Sure, I had to pay the bills, but wouldn't it have been easier for me to stay in the Marines? I wanted to make sure that if the Marines were going to deploy me and I couldn't spend time with my kids, that's the most important thing for me is to be a father and being a kid. So I find myself by a default decision by saying, you know what, I need to take care of this gift that this gift that God has given me through his means. I need to be a dad. I need to be a father. I need to be around. Because I remember being overseas, being deployed, and all my guys would call back, hey, how's my son? Hey, how's my daughter? And there were things going on, and they couldn't control it, and it put so much stress and anxiety in them because things were going on back home. They could have zero control because they couldn't get there. They couldn't fix it. So faith in millionaires ask themselves this. What are we doing this all for? What's this career for? What's this business for? So faith made millionaires actually start off with purpose. Not survivability. But through that purpose, of course, they got to survive. Of course, through that purpose, they have to have some status to get approved and get access. Of course, through that status, they're going to find freedom. But what are you doing this all for? Is it just to pay the bills? No, that's just not enough. That's just surviving. But if you're filled with purpose, that's what faith-made millionaires, what's what faith-based entrepreneurs do. They start with the end in mind. They start with that purpose in mind. And then they discover the vehicle. They find a vehicle on how to actually get it done. Number three, prioritize to maximize. Scripture says this, Matthew 6, verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. See, faith made millionaires say, listen, God, what do you want me to do with this career? What do you, do my, what do you want me to do with my marriage? What do you want me to do with my fatherhood, my, my purpose and my job? What do you want me to do? Lord, inspire me, bless me, send me a, send me a vision, send me a dream. Send me a sign, Lord. Give it to me. And then through that vision, then they act upon it. I can't tell you how many times I've coached and seen many people in the faith. Why are Christians always broke? They go to church. They're praying, Lord, change my life. Change my life. Send me the resources. And yet, they lack the faith to actually express it when those resources or their opportunities come their way. You know why? Because it's not packaged in the way they want it packaged. It's not in the way they want it to be received. See, God is going to say, listen, man, if, I'm, if you're going to seek me first, is come in different areas that you may not even think about are opportunities. It may come in, in methods that may not be understandable to you. But if you're seeking God, you're seeking wisdom, God's going to give you that spiritual x-ray vision to say, hello, this is an opportunity. This is a way for me to fulfill that God-given purpose and dreams and vision that God has given to me. It's not in the career I thought. It's not in the business I thought. It's not in the financial situation I thought. But man, it's here. And that's an opportunity for God to work through you, to you and through you to say, yep, yes, let my kingdom be advanced. Which leads me to another scripture. This is in 1 Timothy. It reads like this. 1 Timothy 3, 3 verse 5. For someone does not know how to manage their own household how will he care for God's church? You see, if you can't take care of yourself first, how are you going to manage God's business? You cannot give to others what you ain't got. And listen, this might ruffle some feathers, but I remember in my first years of entering my faith and just being in love with Jesus, just being in love with my new faith, just being in love with my church, being in love with the fellowship. And I was at the church every day. Here I am trying to be an entrepreneur and, and be a single father of three kids. And I found myself being used by ministry. Monday, I was at the church ministry, Tuesday ministry, Wednesday Bible study, Thursday ministry, Friday ministry, Saturday morning and afternoon ministry, Sunday, all day there. When am I taking care of my first ministry, which is what? My own family. So here I found myself taking care of everybody else as a single father of three kids, but the people that were lacking was my own kids. The thing that was lacking was my own business. I was not expanding my relationship with my children. I was not expanding my growth of my business. And that was my first ministry. So guess what I had to do? I said, listen, Lord, somebody else is going to take care of this ministry. Somebody is going to take care of this ministry. But you've given me a ministry. You've given me a career. You've given me a business. You've given me children that nobody else can take care of. Lord, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all of these things shall be added unto you. So therefore, I decided to take care of home. I decided to take care of what matters most, which is those that's around that God has given to me. I got to take care of that first. I have to take care of my health first. Your body is a temple 
of God. And so therefore, I had to take care of my health. Obviously, take care of your spirit, your health. Take care of your home, your financial situation. Take care of your children. By the way, don't expect perfection. Perfection is not the standard here, everybody. There's only one man that was perfect on this earth. We all know what happened to him. But the standard here is improvement. The standard here is working in a spirit of excellence. Number four, you win, I win, we win. The kingdom wins. Scripture says this, Luke 6, verse 38. Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, and it will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you see, it will be measured to you. Here's the thing too as well. Faith made millionaires, they look for chaos. Faith made millionaires, they look for problems. And they have solutions and products to solve them. To make your life here on earth a little bit more easier to work and live in. What you're going to find is the world is filled with a bunch of complainers and blamers and woe is me. But guess what faith made millionaires do? They look for solutions and they create products and services to build those solutions to bless God's people. You win, I win, we win, the kingdom wins. Number five, listen twice, speak once. See, believers are grounded in fear and in reverence of the Lord. Scripture says this, Proverbs 4 verse 7 says, the beginning of wisdom is this, get wisdom and whatever you get, get insight. Gain wisdom and understanding. It's part of our family values that we have here in this house, in this Apollo household. Reality is God gave us two ears and one mouth. And sadly today, we don't use those in that proportion. In order for you and I to understand our customers, our clients, our market, we have to listen. We have to obtain research. If you want to help your target market, you better get to learn them and understand them. Because once you understand them, then you can craft your response, a better offering of a product and service, therefore to create a better client and customer experience for the people you serve. You ever notice that most people today, all they want to do is just shout at each other. Chat, 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 chat. Yell, 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 yell. Comment, comment, comment. Troll, troll, troll. But guess what people aren't doing today? They're not listening. See, faith-made millionaires and faith-based entrepreneurs we, what we want to do, we want to have a God-controlled spirit. We listen twice, we speak once. The sad part about today, blah, 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 blah. A lot of people just yelling, 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 yelling. People want to be right. My question for you is, do you want to be right or do you want to be wise? Do you want to use force or do you want to use power? How you answer that question is going to lead you to how God wants to leave you. That being said, I want you to put in the comment section below. Do you want to be wise or do you want to be right? Please put it in the comment section below. Habit number six, teamwork makes the dream work. Scripture says this, Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and there's no one there to help them up. Now, if you go back to the Old Testament, look at the 12 tribes of Israel. And if you study the different tribes of Israel, every tribe had their job. Every tribe had their responsibility. Every tribe there had to work with one another to help fulfill God's work. Yet only one of those tribes, the Levites, they're there purely just for ministry and worship and praise. That's, that was their job. But the other 12 tribes, guess what they're supposed to do? Help support the resources. So therefore that tribe can spread and continue God's work. In ministry, in worship, their job is to provide not only the resource, so therefore the tribe of Levi, they can expand the source. So our job as entrepreneurs, that God gives us the source, we're his source. Our job is to provide the resource. And how we do that? By engaging and working together with others. Faith-made millionaires and faith-based entrepreneurs, what we do, we go out there, we create the connections, we build the networks, and we expand relationships. Habit number seven, improve in advance. Scripture says this, Luke verse two, verse 52. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. Even Jesus increased his wisdom. Even Jesus expanded and improved himself. And he was the living God. Even he improved. He showed an example here on earth that he had to gain status not only with God, but he had to gain status with man. So if you think you've got everything going on, and you want to take your game to the next level, you've got to improve. Don't be just sitting there, ah, I'm good, kick my feet back up on the desk. No, brother, sister, you've gotten to this point because your job is to advance, not just kick back and relax and think this is it. Your job is to make sure that your time, 
talent and resource are taken to the next level that you're constantly improving. Or you might be at the other end. You might be frustrated that you don't have the time, talent, and resource. But God's giving you also time, talent, and resource at the current level and ability that you're at. Guess what your job is? To improve. Expand networks, build relationships, increase your skill, create revenue, get a return on your investment at what le whatever level that you are at. Scripture says this in Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes 10.10 10 says, If the iron is blunt and one does not sharpen the edge, he must use more strength, but wisdom helps one to succeed. Wisdom says this, okay, if your, your blade is blunt, it's not sharp, guess what you got to do? Kick back, take a Sabbath, sharpen the saw, understand what you need to improve, do some business planning, invest back into something to strategy and mentorship and, and masterminding. So therefore you can find out who knows what you don't know. So therefore they can provide that wisdom and understanding to advance you to take a great, the greatest shortcut, which is mentorship, to get you to streamline your product, your service, your endeavor, your career, your business, and take it to the next level much faster, much more efficiently, much more happier, much more impactful for the kingdom. Faith-made millionaires always look for ways to sharpen their skills, improve their technologies, create more speed in their products and processes, and build a culture that attracts those seeking improvement. Rarely will you see faith-made millionaires who are making an impact, advancing and improving, simply just complacent with their gifts. Now, they want to help and assist others. Because why? Back to the one, back on purpose. They're, they're anticipation of the generations. These habits all work together for the goodness of expansion of God's kingdom. Last but not least, despite what's going on in the chaos of this world and the current state of our country, and sadly, the lack of faith just in our faith. I hope that you use these habits because America, the world needs to see God's people rise up. People today need to see a leader. People need to see those that are in the faith rise up and use their career, their businesses, their investments, their, their status, whatever, their social media profiles to make sure that God is known for people. The challenge today is a lot of people are seeking for something. And because faith-made millionaires and faith-based entrepreneurs aren't making their profiles known that they're serving God, that they're putting Jesus first, that Jesus is king. And instead of finding Jesus, instead of finding heaven, instead of finding faith, people are finding it in drugs, people are finding it in other genders, people are finding it in other political parties, people are finding it in, in, in things that are twisted in this world. And I want you to know that God has a solution to you and through you and wants to use you in a mighty and powerful way. If that's you and you believe that, put it in the comment section, I am being used for God. I want, if you're gonna be used, be used by God. Be used by God to bless other people. And I pray that if you want to work for God in a very mighty and powerful way, be wealthy, be impactful, elevate your status, elevate your business, elevate yourself in your career. The world needs to know how believers, faith-made millionaires, faith-based entrepreneurs, faith-based career-minded folks are elevating God's word once again because time, it's ticking and time needs leaders. God needs you to do a very big impact for him. By the way, if you want a copy of this and uh, you want to use this as a workbook, you want to get a PDF, we'll put a link here in the description below. So therefore you can get a copy with this in your email box, but make sure you click the link at the bottom. So therefore we can get this out to you. That being said, please subscribe. Make sure you share your comments below. You agree with me, don't agree with me, or you have other habits to add, please. I want to know what would you add to these habits? So therefore, God can use you in a very mighty and powerful way to the next level. We want to know. Please put your comments in the comment section below. Share this with other believers to us out. But once again, I'm your mighty smart guy from Dallas, Texas. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be mighty smart today. Mm -hmm.